Okay, we're gonna test out the new Citadel contrast colors. And I know I did this with a Hulk video. Um, I think the Hulk video was too grand in scale, where that was too much coverage for a larger figure. So I wanna try to show off some of the brighter colors. So we're gonna try some of the um, Doomfire Magenta and the Luxion Purple. Um, and what we're going to do is basically use a wash brush. So we're using a Citadel wash brush. Um, and we're going to open one of these things up. I already shook it up. So we, you want to make sure you have a, a good shake on this to get all the pigmentation and all the color mixed. It's the first time I'm opening this and trying out this color. So it looks pretty opaque. That's kind of what we want. Try to prop this thing open. It's very watery. You can see the consistency. It's almost like it's ready to drip. That's what we want. We just want to color it and then have it be over top of this gray and the white, um, the dry brushing. Um, so we're just going to kind of color over that. And we're not really going to hit the recesses too much because we want the recesses to remain black. So. Let's just try in here. We'll see how this purple winds up looking in some of these areas. It looks pretty dark. You can see, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. You can see how it looks on the dry brushed area versus how it looks in the area that's just the black primer paint. Um, and that's by design. We want it to go over the dry brush and want it to look different in those areas. So it's actually working perfectly to what it was designed and made to do. These contrast paints are going to look different on the uh, black, white, and gray areas that you prime. And that's exactly what we want it to do. We don't want it to be flat. We want the contrast to show through. So you can go pretty heavy on this because it's so light. <laughs> I'm gonna spread the contrast paint around so it's not coagulating and gathering up in one specific area. We want it to lay in different areas differently. I'm not entirely sure I'm even gonna use that Doomfire Magenta that I actually wanted to originally, just cause this is coming out great. Zoom out. <clears throat> and again, you can see how it's laying. In different areas. We'll do after shots of how everything looks once it's dry too. You get to control it. I mean, you can put as much or as little of this paint on as you want. And it's easy to flow and move. <clears throat> so as long as you've done a good uh, dry brushing initially, you don't really have to do too many 
layers of this paint, you just gotta move it around. Get it to go where you want it to go. And that dry brushing work that you did initially, is all the work that you're gonna need to do. too much the top up here is what I'm going to do. Is a wipe technique. What you're basically just doing is you're wiping the paint but it stays in the recessed areas. You can use a sponge for that too. I'd venture to say the sponge works better from the experience. And this ultimately would be a really cool throne for a goblin queen or a skeletor. Or Mephisto. Or just about anybody that has some evil, demonic type power. It's not going to work for like a Doctor Doom. It'd be cool for Spawn. Honestly, if I were going to do it for Spawn, I probably would have incorporated some more green highlights. You could do that. You could use another <clears throat> another paint and kind of do some of these eyes with green, which would look cool. And I may do that, actually. Or I might do some of the magenta areas in there. To highlight some of the... Those recesses a little bit better. This isn't anything hard. I mean, this is not taking a whole lot of time. We're only at eight minutes. This is a lot of me slowing down to talk and explain things too. This is really what we call slap painting or contrast painting. Another technique to have in your arsenal, especially if you're trying to paint fast. And this stuff was made really, not so much for this stuff, but more to speed paint like an army where you're putting together an army of Warhammer figures or trolls or something for a miniature game. They're all going to be roughly the same color. can kind of go through an entire army relatively quick versus doing a lot of the detail work. An individual figure is going to take. And I'm liking how this is coming out because it's leaving a lot of the contrast areas. The highlights, lowlights, recesses alone. And that's exactly what it's supposed to do. It's getting into the recess areas. And 
and it's also staining. that we already did. As you can see, it's going to keep the black. The recess is there. And it's basically just taking the highlights and lowlights of that gray and white. And it's giving us it's giving us more to work with. The chair looks cool, just the gray dry brushing on it alone. But now you're just putting the purple over top of it and staining that gray dry brush area. Purple. So, and the same thing with the white. The white was on the tips. So it's going to look different. So for anyone who's familiar with like Zenithal priming, contrast paints for you. For you. It's gonna look different with the whites, the grays, the blacks, and the different angles. I didn't do that on this chair. I just did a dry brush. So if you're into that type of priming, which a lot of people are now, this stuff's gonna work great for what you want it to do. You can water this down too, if you want, dilute it a little bit. 